At some point, we were actually seeing China overtaking the U.S. in the late 2020s as the world's largest economy. 中国大陆经济急起直追，可能不到十年内，世界最大经济体的宝座就要换人做做看。尽管这项统计专家认为象征性大于实质性，但对持续较劲的美中两国来说，绝对是输人不输阵。美国这几年经济发展不理想，就被末日博士卢比尼一语道破。But we have in the U.S. many problems. We have a very divided political system. Partisanship is actually damaging. 全球经济学家也直言，美国因为政治人物用错力道，虽然看起来光鲜亮丽，但实际上效益并不像想象中这么大。实际提升社会竞争力，才有利于长期性的经济发展。So they've always had an industrial strategy. The big change today is that U.S. competitiveness. First of all, it's not happening in a mercantilistic way that Trump was advocating for. It was just build a wall or you know. You know the whole stuff about trade relationships. It's about investment, investment, investment. 经济学家也认为，中国大陆想超车也不是这么容易，尤其现在面对的阻力比两年前要再更大。People are worried that China, you know, may take over the United States, but Chinese growth is not anymore potentially. So the main issue facing China today is that the population, private sector, the investors. They don't believe that the economy is going to grow for a while. 专家表示，中国大陆最大的优势就在于拥有全世界最先进而且最完整的供应链。尽管这几年受到去全球化、欧美国家分散风险的冲击，但仍然不可忽视产业能量。不过，包括人口红利、劳动市场等优势，恐怕不像以前这么无往不利。We're still expecting China to continue to grow quite robustly, but one big factor、um, they have playing against them is the various demographics dynamics. So China is seeing an aging population, a low birth rate, and a rising dependency ratio, which means that there are relatively fewer working age people. So these dynamics actually are visible in the U.S. as well to some extent, but in China they're a lot more severe, and this is an important factor in the longer term that we're expecting to impede growth. 中国大陆的经济成长步伐变缓。根据英国经济与商业研究中心的预估，依照现在的趋势，中国大陆要到二零三七年才有机会成为全球第一大经济体。还可能在二零五零年又被美国超车，而且后面还有一个人口大国在急起直追。India's on track to be the fastest growing economy amongst the G20 nations by quite a considerable margin. In context, what we've seen is quite rapid growth in the previous two years as well. The demographics are still very youthful. Compared to other large Asian economies such as Japan, South Korea, or China, which have aging demographics, so that's potentially quite an important advantage over the next 20 years. 但印度的基础建设不到位，跟美中的差距还有一大截。专家认为，至少未来十到二十年，每年都要有百分之六到百分之七的经济成长率，才有机会后来居上。When we talk about India becoming the world's largest economy, that is a much longer time horizon and into the 2080s. And forecasting that far out, you need to consider a range of scenarios.、Um, so this is just one of the possible scenarios. 经济学家强调，美中各自有危机要面对，能将利益最大化的方式，其实就是共同合作。We will be prosperous if we are nice to each other.、Uh, if we are absolutely divided, we will be rich and very unhappy and very unstable. 但依照目前美中两国都是政治摆中间、剑拔弩张的紧张关系形势下，合作的空间有限，全球的经济成长率也势必受到牵连。TVBS 新闻综合报道。